Now be careful, some solar systems out there will cost you more money than actually you're saving. There is several ways to do them, they're not all equal. And in this video I'm going to try to dumb it down and help you out guys decide because most likely you landed on this video because you might be doing your research and I don't want you to make a mistake. I've done a lot of extensive research as far as this goes and some of them will make you literally lose money. So let's start with the simplest one. Um, the one that the companies come over and install the system at your house. The legislation is changing to make it very, very simple and not to get too long into it because I have a video that I've created as far as that goes. They don't want your power. They don't want solar panels on top of your roof. That's unreliable power, power that they have to pay a lot of money for it. So in 2025, they're gonna pay you four cents per kilowatt. In 2028, two cents per kilowatt. So that solar system that the company comes over and installs at your house, it's completely dead. It costs way too much money to put it on and you're gonna lose money guaranteed on it. Guaranteed you're gonna lose money on it. So if the salesman comes over and knocks on your door and says, hey, I wanna install a solar system at your house, close the door because I am saving you $20,000 right now. So what about different systems? Well, the problem with the solar systems is that you have to have a license to install it for somebody else. In your own house, you could do whatever you want. This is my system that I have over here. And even though there's like certain regulations and things like that that you have to follow, theoretically, what you do inside the walls of your house, as long as you're not putting any power outside your house, that's completely your business. It might be a little bit something in between you and your insurance company, but that's debatable and fear is the easiest way to sell your things, therefore you shouldn't worry too much. As far as the systems that you could put into your house by yourself, the do-it-yourself systems, uh, they come in four flavors. The, the cheapest one is the microgrid tie inverters. They're extremely popular. They look like this. So if you are in a place where this particular system is allowed, then this is the cheapest way to do it. You put a 200 or 300 solar panel behind one of these $70 units and then at $400 you're starting to produce power about a kilowatt a day. But these have their own problems. These can produce more power than you actually need and therefore if you are producing more power than your house uses when a lot of the things are off, you're putting power back into the network and that could be a problem, especially if you have a smart meter. The smart meter will report to the electrical company and for safety reasons they say that these are illegal because they put power back into the network. Also you're going to get charged for that power because the meter doesn't care which direction the electricity goes. So you could produce up to like 200 watts to cover your base for your router, for the little things that stay on all the time, but anything over this it's not really worth it. So this is the simplest system. You're gonna get your money back really, really fast for what you pay for it, but it's not gonna reduce your power bill too much. They come with their own problems if you have too many things off, so I would recommend to stay away from these if you wanna get a little bit more serious. The next system will be a grid tie inverter with a power limiter, which is basically one of these. They have a sensor on the main line and they could adjust the power output. That way, nothing gets put in the network and you're producing only as much power as you need. At that point, you could scale up the system. So if your house uses 200 watts, you could tell this unit to create only 200 watts. But if you turn on a light and now you need 300 watts, then the sensor can sense it and automatically puts an additional 300 watts. Electricity always flows to the shortest distance possible. So if you're pulling electricity out of the network, this one will compensate only for the amount that you're supposed to pull out of the network and therefore will bring your meter to zero. This can be hooked up directly to a solar panel, so when the sun is out, what you do is you get power pushed into the inverter and therefore your power bill literally just drops to zero as long as you have enough sun and enough inverter to compensate for those things. But it comes with its own problems. So first of all, these are very, very sensitive to voltage. And if you have a solar system that has too many volts or too little volts, then this either can stop working or give you all kinds of error messages. Because the sun is not always up there, they struggle to handle the cloud days. And even though it's a really, really good solution, you only can produce power when the sun is up. This one is only about a thousand watts. So it will compensate up to a thousand watts of things that you consume in the house. The problem is that if you turn an AC on or if you turn on a microwave and a coffee something and a TV, then you're going to eat a lot more and then you need two. Then the system scales up. They're also more expensive than the micro inverters. So this is a good solution, but it has its caveats. So a lot of the people go for the simplified version of these. 
after they have the microinverters because it's better but it has its own problems. Remember, the goal is not to put any electricity into the network and these things do that. So because of that, you are 100% legal because everything that happens, happens behind your house. Now, there are some electrical companies that say that these things can put power back into the network and maybe electrocute one of their electricians, but they're specifically designed that if the power goes down, they stop. So even though they're not certified by the electrical company, they do what they were supposed to do. Can one of them go bad and not do that? Maybe there's always a possibility accidents happen. Go Even if a unit is certified by an electrical company, it doesn't mean that it never goes bad and never puts power back in. The certification only means that they looked at that particular model and brand and uh, they certify it. Basically, they got paid for it and it costs a lot of money but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. So solar with grid tie inverters, with power limiter, it's the better way of doing it. The only problem is that if you're using 200 watts and you have a thousand watts worth of power, then you are wasting 800 watts. And that's the problem. And that's where you're gonna go into a little bit of a more complicated system that will cost you even more money. This is a charge controller. And the charge controller takes the power from the solar panels puts it into the batteries, and then from the batteries, you put it into your inverters. And therefore, if you have any additional power, then that power doesn't get wasted throughout the day, and then you could store it, and you could use it in the off hours when there's like no solar, which happens to be most of the time when you're spending at home, because you work from nine to five, and the sun is gone by the time you get home, and that's where you need the power. So this one complicates things, because even though it's the better system, you're putting the power into the batteries and then you use it later on, but the battery costs money. How do you scale this system? The problem is that it automatically doubles, if not triples the amount of money because the batteries, even though they're getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, I have eight batteries over here that will cost you maybe $2,000 and it will take you a lot longer to get your money back. Yes, you're gonna capture all the electricity that you don't use and you don't waste, but in the same time, you have to have a huge amount of investment coming in. And when you have a complicated system like this, you're gonna have additional costs from cabling to special fuses. This is a, basically a 100 amp fuse. That's a 60 amp fuse. There will be fan, there will be cooling. Uh, the inverter might not last forever. You might have to uh, charge the charge controller. So there are costs and things can break. So first of all, you have to know what you're doing over here. This is not gonna be something that somebody's going to install into your house. So this is a very, very expensive, fun to play toy, but it's definitely a do-it-yourself system. This system is still dependent on the power line company. So why is that very, very important? And I said it that way because I wanna emphasize on it. And you have a huge amount of consumption throughout the, the night then you run out of power from the battery, you don't want things to stop, right? So this system will automatically pull energy out of the network. The problem is that if you're still hooked up to the network, you have a monthly bill that you get from the privilege of being hooked up to the network. Uh, usually it's $12 to $30, depends on what city or state you are in. So that you have to pay regardless if you're using any electricity from them or no electricity from them. And of course, People think, well, if I have the solar panels and I have the charge controller and I have this, why am I not just using an inverter and run my house on the inverter? And here's the inverter, right? So all I have to do is just hook up this, uh, 2,000 watt, 3,000 watt, 4,000 watt, 5,000 watt, and then run it off the batteries and produce enough electricity and I don't have to give them any power bill and I literally living off the grid. But living off the grid is maybe the biggest mistake that people make because Living off the grid is extremely complicated. I think the people that dream about living off the grid underestimate how complex energy production is and how important it is for you. And I'm gonna to try to explain that in as few words as possible. So first of all, an inverter like this, this is a 2000 watt inverter, can provide up to 2000 watts worth of power. So you are in the house, your children are in the house, they turn the TV on, they turn the lights on, they turn a couple of things on, and what happens is that all of a sudden you have an 800 watt consumption. This one can provide 800 watt, no problem whatsoever. The problem comes in if your wife goes into the kitchen and turns on the microwave and now that one is 1500 watts, right? 1500 with 800, it's a problem because this one can do it. So of course you have to go and get a more expensive and a bigger inverter. The problem is that you have to give it fuel. 
and fuel comes in from the battery. And even if you have 10 batteries, and they will be able to provide enough power for a 5,000 watt inverter, if somebody turns on the AC, now the AC uses 5,000 watts by itself. And a lot of problems starts to come from there. So this system where you provide your own electricity and you live off the grid is one of the biggest dreams that people have and also one of the biggest mistakes. Because a lot of unknowns happen. It will literally change your lifestyle where you will be able to maybe run certain things only when the sun is up or you're going to run out of power in the middle of the night or you will not be able to just splurge on, you know, today I'm going to cook a meal, it's going to take two hours on a microwave or on a uh, air fryer or something like that. So stop dreaming about running your house on an inverter. Uh, it sounds great. It sounds amazing to have energy independence, but there are just so many things that can go wrong. For example, you have one cloudy day. Maybe you have enough batteries. It's okay. What if you have a cloudy week? What if you have a cloudy month? Now all of a sudden you can't do anything in the house because you cannot charge the batteries enough for that. And now you're in the backyard, maybe running a generator in the middle of town, making noise, creating all kinds of problems. To run it with the inverter is going to become very expensive. Also, there is a big problem, is that if you are disconnected from the main network, then you will be able to run the circuits that you already have in your house. But let's say some people say, well, how about I run it off the inverter and then I'm still keeping myself connected to the network and the two things you can't really mix because to run it off the inverter you have to have a separate line for the inverter you have to literally pull wires through your house and unplug your fridge from the main network and plug it in over here because the systems are not compatible you can't hook this one up on the same exact line these grid tie inverters with power limiter that's why they are so desirable because these can do that they can only provide as much power and they sync to your network and they use the local cabling that you have already and they can get along with your normal network without pulling other wires and when you run out of power on your batteries or you're overwhelming these inverters what happens is that you're automatically pulling from the network and the transition is completely seamless you don't notice anything thanks for watching i hope this video helped you out and let me know what you think at the bottom in the comment section.